Thank you so much. A guy calls the hospital. He says, you got to help. My wife's going into labor. The nurse says, calm down. Is this her first child? He says, no, this is her husband. <laughs> Baby Jesus. It seems almost irreverent to refer to our majestic Lord, the King of Kings, as a baby. But of course, that's the point. The God of the universe became flesh, which means he came into the world as we all do, as an infant, fragile and weak, totally dependent on others. What does it teach us that God became a human being and became a baby? First, even though babies are weak and small, they make a huge difference in our lives. A young couple was taking their firstborn home from the hospital. Just before the husband wheeled his wife out the door, he turned to the nurse and said, I almost forgot. What time should we wake him up in the morning? <laughs> Babies make a huge difference in the lives of people. I've known people who were experts on child rearing until they had children of their own. I remember our, how our first child changed our lives. Before he was born, we got more sleep. I remember I was the center of my wife's attention before the baby was born. <laughs> Babies interrupt important activities. I was pulling my first all-nighter on my PhD dissertation. Yvonne came to me about 11 p.m. She said, it's time. I said, it can't be time. You're six, it's six, you have six weeks to go to your due date. And also, I've got to finish this chapter tonight. But she insisted that it was time, so we dropped our son off at our friend's house and drove the hour to the hospital in Indianapolis. Yvonne was right. Our daughter came a few hours later. A baby changes everything. The angel tried to prepare Mary and Joseph for the birth of baby Jesus, but I'm not sure anything could have prepared them. Is it the same with expecting parents today? I came across a source that had some suggestions for parenthood. These may be helpful for some of you, or you can pass them on to someone else. For women, to prepare for maternity, put on a dressing gown and stick a bean bag down the front. Leave it there for nine months. After nine months, take out 10% of the beans. For men to prepare for paternity, go to the local pharmacy, put all your cash and credit cards on the counter, and tell the pharmacist to help himself. <laughs> then go to the supermarket, arrange to have your salary paid directly to their head office. Go home, pick up the newspaper, and read it for the last time. <laughs> to prepare for nights, walk around the living room from 5 to 10 p.m. carrying a wet bag weighing approximately 8 to 20 pounds. At, t at 10 p.m., put the bag down, set the alarm for midnight, go to sleep, get up at 12, walk around the living room again with the bag until 1 a.m., put the alarm on for 3 a.m. As you can't get back to sleep, get up at 2 a.m., make a drink, go to bed at 2.45, get up at 3 a.m. when the alarm goes off, sing songs in the dark until 4 a.m., put the alarm on for 5 a.m., get up, make breakfast, keep this up for five years. Look cheerful. <laughs> to prepare for the mess children make, smear peanut butter onto the sofa and jam onto the curtains. Hide a fish stick behind the stereo and leave it there all summer. <laughs> stick your fingers in the flower beds, then rub them on the clean walls. Cover the stains with crayons. Always repeat everything you say at least five times. Always repeat everything, never mind. To prepare for grocery shopping, take with you the nearest thing you can find to a preschool child. A fully grown goat is excellent. <laughs> if you intend to have more than one child, take more than one goat. <laughs> Buy your week's groceries without letting the goats out of your sight. Pay for everything the goats eat or destroy. For meal preparation, hollow out a melon. Make a small hole in the side. Suspend it from the ceiling and swing it from side to side. Now get a bowl of soggy Fruit Loops and attempt to spoon it into the swaying melon by pretending to be an airplane. 
continue until half the Fruit Loops are gone. Tip the rest into your lap, making sure that lots of it falls on the floor. You're now ready to feed a 12-month-old baby. Of course, babies don't stay little. A friend of mine, was ex- ex- his wife was expecting twins, and he said to me, I think I can do anything for 18 years. I laughed out loud. I said, who told you it ends at 18? <laughs> we have hopes and dreams for them as they grow up. Mary and Joseph, no doubt, had dreams for this boy of theirs. A physician told this story about her then four-year-old daughter. On the way to preschool, the doctor had left her stethoscope on the car seat, and the little girl began to play with it. Be still, my heart, thought the physician. This daughter, my daughter, wants to follow in my footsteps. Then the child spoke into the instrument, Welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order? (laughs) Babies make a huge difference in the lives of families. And baby Jesus made a huge difference in the whole world, more than Joseph and Mary could have ever imagined. God coming to earth as a human is a radical idea. It is still offensive to our Jewish and Muslim, Muslim friends. It's difficult to accept the idea of God becoming human. It's a mystery to us Christians. Yet the coming of this baby has changed the world. Nearly two billion people on earth look to baby Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We call it incarnation, God becoming flesh. How many hospitals would never have been built had it not been for baby Jesus? Had he not grown up to be the great physician, the great healer? Would we have focused on healing? How many more wars would have been fought if it had not been for baby Jesus? He grew up to be the Prince of Peace who plants peace within us and leads us to live in harmony with others. The Prince of Peace who calls us to beat our swords and to plowshares, to lay down our weapons, to learn peace and not war. How many hungry people would not have been fed had it not been for baby Jesus? He multiplied the loaves and fishes and taught his followers to feed the hungry and clothe the naked. He said, as you did it to the least of these, you did it also to me. How many derelict lives would never have been turned around had it not been for the higher power found in the Christ child? He gave his followers second chances, third chances, and on and on. He taught forgiveness and lived by it, lived it by forgiving others. How many babies would not have been adopted had it not been for the baby Jesus? He taught us that God adopted us into the divine family because of God's love for us. How many more lives would have ended in tragedy had it not been for the hope this baby brings, the hope of Emmanuel, God with us? Perhaps you've read the poem, One Solitary Life. Although the author is frequently cited as unknown, the poem actually goes back to Reverend James Allen Francis, an American Baptist pastor, It was from one of his sermons published in 1926, nearly 100 years ago. It captures the difference that the baby Jesus has made in our world. He was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant. He grew up in another village where he worked in a carpenter shop until he was 30. Then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never had a family or owned a home. He didn't go to college, he never lived in a big city, he never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of the things that usually accompany greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He was only 33 when the tide of public opinion turned against him. His friends ran away, one of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies and went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves While he was dying, his executioners gambled for his garments, the only property he had on earth. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Twenty centuries have come and gone, and today he is the central figure of the human race. I am well within the mark when I say that all the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, all the kings who ever reigned put together, have not affected the life of mankind on this earth as much as that one solitary life. Baby Jesus has made all the difference in the world. He grew up 
taught us about the love of God and gave his life for us. And maybe tonight, for you and me, it doesn't really matter that much, the difference that the baby Jesus made in the world, but the difference that he has made in our lives. Thanks be to God. Amen.